Haley. What are your thoughts on Nikki Haley running for president? Oh, I think there's two things. So I'm, what I'm going to talk about, uh, macro, micro, because you know that's how I do it. On the macro level, she has now come out and there's more than just DeSantis has walked onto the debate stage. There's now three podiums, Trump, DeSantis, and Haley. This opens the door for others to declare as well on the macro stage. And so what that does is actually helps DeSantis because it's not DeSantis breaking rank and saying, I want to run. Now it's multiple people. And it's like, hey, this is a primary. This is what we do. This is the process. So Donald, you're, you're going to be on stage and uh, there's other people going to be there. So on the macro level, I think this helps DeSantis because it opens up the field and it's not just Trump versus DeSantis. There's many people running. The second thing on the micro level, I think she's positioning for a VP spot. Oh, wow. That's my that's my thought. What do you think, Pat? Um, you and I are on the same page with that. I, I think what they are doing uh, is exactly that. Yeah, that's for me. It's exactly that. Uh, uh, they're, they're speaking very highly of each other. When you get on that stage, the strategy, my opinion, is the fact that Nikki Haley is going to be the one to go after DeSantis, not mm. Trump. And they're going to double tag team. Oh. And then eventually Nikki could end up being a VP and by the way, she's a very qualified VP if she ends up becoming a VP. Uh, some even thought at one point she wasn't on Trump camp because she called him out on a couple different things. So this is, you know, this is a very, very strategy, strategic thing that's taking place. <clears throat> it's going to be interesting to see the camp that – because there is a Republican camp that doesn't want Trump. And there is a Republican camp that only believes Trump's the one that needs to finish up his second term and fix everything that started. Either way – this is now what we're seeing strategy taking place between the two. It'll be fun to see what direction the Santa's. This go. was an episode on, I sort of got on House mm -hmm. of Cards where where uh, Kevin Spacey's character teamed up with somebody else during a debate, and I mean I I see it all playing. But dude, honestly, I'm what, just hearing you guys talk about the stage and the bro. I swear to God, I would pay to watch. I'm excited to see that moment of. DeSantis, Trump, and her. I think that UFC should get on board, TV. bro, and just make it like announce them and have them come in. The, dude, I would 100% put 50 bucks to watch this. The first we time. We still need to put our bet on. Yeah, and, and, and mind you, that's going to divide the party, and then we mean you uh, pay for what. I think, I think Tom hit it on the head. I think Pat agreed with him. She is full on auditioning for a vice presidential role mm -hmm. for sure. in the movie called 2024. Yeah. <laughs> that, there, there's no chance she's being elected president of the United States. No. Okay. My opinion, hear me out. I agree. It's Trump or DeSantis. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, she ain't no like walk in the park. She's cunning, smart, smart, attractive enough to to basically hold, hold her, her own, own on the stage. Mm -hmm. She was a governor. Wasn't she the ambassador to the UN under Trump? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she ain't no joke. So just House of Cards style. This She's is, uh, got some stuff up her sleeve. Yeah. Let's see who she attacks. Let's see who she embraces. And it's not just up her sleeve. It's between her ears. Um. I had that privilege of sitting with her and with um, uh, Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne in Dallas at a small gathering. They were trying to raise funds and stuff. And she was there to support Beth's campaign. And there was about 50 of us at this little reception before the big reception. You know how those things work. Um, and somebody asked her to give a breakdown of you know, foreign trade, tariff, no tariff, and things. And she went for 15 minutes with one of the most elegant dissertations. And I'm like, wow, not only does she know what she's talking about, she's in it. And that was when she was serving at the UN. So this is also a very smart person that would balance a ticket and she would play her foreign policy cards and experience with trade in the UN. Oh, wow. Her and DeSantis, unbeatable ticket. Her and wow. Trump, Still very beatable, my yeah. opinion. You might be right. Wait, her and DeSantis, unbeatable ticket. Her, her and Trump, still to be. Yeah. Because I think, huh. bottom line is this. We're talking about primaries, we get it. There's so many independents out there. There's yeah. so many, you know, conservative Democrats who will gladly, loudly, proudly walk into a voting booth and say, I voted for Ron DeSantis, no doubt. Yes. You, there's not those many of those at Trump these days. Yeah. I'm sorry. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.